Chat of the Wild is a part of the Greenlit Podcast Network. To find out more information, as well as other great shows, go to greenlitpodcast.com. Welcome to Chat of the Wild. In this season, we are playing through The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. In the last episode, we got some things together. Some tools were built. Some cannons were refurbished. And we launched ourselves <laughs> into the heavens or possibly into the hells. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Up to you to decide. <laughs> we are currently in the city in the sky. Uh, which is strange. Oh um, my god! Again, I always have to like kick this over to BC, just to because like you are the least familiar with a lot of this stuff. Like you know, initial thoughts. What do you feel about this dungeon here? So um, this is the item for this dungeon. Is one of the few things for this game that was spoiled for me. So like I knew mm. this item existed. Uh, and as I was playing, I was just thinking about like, what would I be? What would be going through my head if I didn't know what you got in this dungeon? That's uh, what I was hoping for, man. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Unfortunately, this is this is one thing I knew. It was um, it was still like pretty interesting to go through. Um, I'm terrified of heights. I'm terrified of flying. Ooh. So dungeons like this where you're like up in the sky and there's that constant threat of like dropping to into the abyss uh are always tough for me uh julia was sitting there and like critiquing me playing it (laughs) it's like like, i'm just really stressed out right now add that to the list of phobias that this game you know pokes at right yeah 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 I, i i think my biggest disappointment was you know, this is the city of the Ukus, and you meet the the shopkeep who speaks, you know, Hylian. But all the other Ukus are just like there; they don't talk to you. Yeah. So. Yeah, they just turn into cuckoos. Like they don't actually act like any anything else. They they um, act like Deku leaves. They're mindless they, birds. It's it. Yeah. It. My my issue, my biggest issue with this dungeon or, I mean, almost like world or town or whatever you want to call this because we are introduced to, like, a new biome. Uh, we've been hinted at with these creatures up to this point. It's not creepy enough. It's not weird <laughs> enough that it just feels like this elegant, uh, you know... I don't know how to describe it because other than a, we, we call it a dungeon, but it's just, you know, a series of these ornate temples yeah. that are floating in the sky. And there's not really much in terms of like the, it, it, in terms of like depth or any kind of world building in this whatsoever, where you get led into the talk of these Uku being the things that created the world and all of this. And we're going to go to their home and, Oh, it just, it just looks like any other dungeon. Like we've had more thought out and fulfilling dungeons up to this point that felt like lived in real places. And there was like a reason we were going into them and it felt natural. And this one felt like the least natural of all of them. Well, we, we get dropped into like a, like immediately you fall into like a pool which there's some there's some water bombs if you go down there's a chest down there yeah. with water bombs in it and it's just like I don't know why I'm getting these but but you're like ostensibly in the dungeon at that point like yes. there isn't yeah. an outside area there isn't any like NPCs to talk to really other than the shop there's there's no there's no like uh, d- delivery of lore that that we sort of felt like we were all building up to that I thought maybe I'd forgotten about because like Same. we like there's nothing it's just head on in man why don't you walk on in there now design wise i thought this was a fun dungeon i thought there were very interesting uh challenges throughout it i thought it mixed it up consistently 
and I did enjoy going through all of it for the most part. There were a few few tedious things in there, some stuff that I didn't think was very obvious. Uh, I think the very the one of the first things we come across uh, in terms of of something that's different than the previous one are the weird Fabergé egg switches mm-hmm. that hang on there. They almost look like lamps that you're supposed to. Cl- get like climb onto or use your claw shot to grab onto and pull them down at switches and we haven't had anything like that Some, really sometimes you need to put your heavy boots on to right you could do it to give it a tug right. yeah you can do it there's one you come across you do it nothing happens you hop off and then Mindo will be like oh if only you were heavier and yes. then you can just do that yeah um but there is a part near the end that i just got totally lost cuz i was just like i don't know what i need to do and then i finally see the little egg switch and then right. i'm like oh i need to get that but then it turns out i can't actually reach it even though i'm pretty sure my claw shot reached it unless you do this other thing over here that so, one drove me nuts i was yeah. annoyed at that point yeah, we'll we'll get to that one. I mm-hmm. I got messed up on that. One of the other things that happens throughout this is uh, whenever we're outside, we have to deal with wind. Yeah. So you're given enough of a gap, and you don't have to spend a lot of time running on the ground that I don't think it affects you that much. There were plenty of times that I was able to run from one chamber to another yeah. without the wind affecting me at all. Really? Because I, I got knocked off of bridges all the time. Really? <laughs> okay. Yeah. I- <laughs> I did. I did. Uh, I mean, a couple times, but I just grabbed onto the ledge and stayed there till the wind was gone. I just put on okay. my like when I thought that it was initially going to be a problem. I put my put on my iron boots and like if there were a lot of, you know, enemies or whatever, I put on my iron boots to slash them and then take them off, you know, and then take off my boots and then just wait for the wind to be done. And then I'd cross just fine. Like in one swoop, I thought for sure the wind would get me. And knock me off, so... But, I don't know. I was kind of bored with this with this dungeon. I was like, is it ever going to end? And then, there's just so many, like... I, I will say there was, like, different pathways that you could go to. At, you know, like, it wasn't so linear. I didn't think, at least. But, I don't know. Like, I didn't even go to all of the rooms. You don't even have to go to all the rooms. Like, there's, like, these little caveats, and I'm like, eh, I don't need to go there. I finished right. it without doing any of it. There, so there, there is a couple rooms that you go into that you'll go in without the item that you get in here. You can only get, like, a treasure chest with, like, a key in it. And right. And you leave back there. And it's interesting, as you go back, a cutscene happens where that dragon that we talked about at the end of the last episode Mm -hmm. swoops in and destroys the bridge. Right. So, at the moment, you're not going to be able to go back there, but you do need to go back there. And I do think it becomes more interesting later. Um, I do feel, yeah, there, there was some tedium at first of, like, going to these areas. I feel, before you get your item, every room feels kind of slow. You have those those squares on the ground that will fall that you just have to like run over as quickly as you can. A lot of times you just want to be like, if you see an Uku, you probably got to carry them and fly, like float across an area um, because they just act like Kukos where they just let you glide downward. Um, no, I, I, I do agree with you, Jess, that in, until you get, I'll just, we'll just say it until you get your dual claw shots that you get in this the dungeon itself does feel kind of boring, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Mm. And then I just I'm... happen to come upon, you know, the the mid boss. Like I'm like, oh, huh, I guess I'm here. <laughs> I like literally fell like in that pit thing, like you know, like the the tunnel thing. Like I didn't even mean to go yeah. down that far. I just happened to mm. fall down all the way that far, and he kind of went, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> and so. I don't know. I just, and I didn't like hearing the, you know, the ukus because it creeped me out. And I'm like, oh my God, just be done with this. And then the music was just like, it was like ethereal, but then it had the creepy, like something you would hear from the shiny, like with the twins coming down the the hallway. Yeah, there's like a weird chirping. Yeah. A creepy chirp that yeah, you get I was in like, the music. Okay, I'm done with this creepy thriller chirping sound. 
yeah, I think the the thing that stressed me out the most was, I think it's the bird enemies make that sound, and it reminds me of the little imps from uh, Wind Waker, in that they just yeah. make this like strange chimey sound, and I just couldn't figure out what it was. Uh, I mean, as far as I mean, me harping on the we go left and then we go right thing, like every single dungeon in this game, uh, they do have you go right. Oh, sorry, for Jeremy and I, they do have you go right <laughs> at the beginning <laughs> of say. this. And it's to grab the key. So that's oh, nice. Yeah. It was a departure of that. But then you but then you go to the left side, and that's the single claw shot side where you fight the mini boss. Which uh, I'm sorry, it's just another straight line again. And and then, then you go to the right side, which is the dual Spider Man side, which, you know, is cool, but it you're just heading you're just you're just you're just moving. You just keep moving. Just keep moving. Just keep swimming. So it's it, its yeah. exploration is very limited, uh, and that is just that is an issue with this this game as a whole. Is that outside and even even in the overworld, it really doesn't reward you to explore because they make these things so obvious. Uh, like by the end of it. Like you, you go into the open field and there are like maybe three things for you to check out and you know what the telltale signs of those are now. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't really, it doesn't have that, that feeling that some of the previous Zeldas have had, or even similar to like a Metroidvania where when you get a new ability, you're just like, I want to comb this entire map all over again, where with the spinner spinner's cool it's weird it's different but you just know you're only looking for that rail line and that's it and if there's even that many out there which uh, we there really are after we got it we were like oh guys you're gonna want it you know jeremy and i were like we need to get you got to get out there there's some cool stuff hidden out there with the spinner and i mean i looked around there really isn't there's maybe like a few things I, my I, my I, my I, defense of that is that I think the area that you go to where you do that, I think it just looks cool because you just go over this chasm. Yeah. And I just think that's cool. Yeah. And then you like, yeah, the way it ends up. But no, it's not like you're going to go and find these things. There's all these puzzles. There's a couple interesting little puzzle things that you do with it out in the overworld. But no, it isn't like it just completely flip the lid on how you explore this area or oh, the yeah, whole no. world or anything like that. It doesn't really doesn't really do that. And with this dungeon, you kind of just, you have so little to actually look around for in each room that you just, you just got to just find the door, go through a door, just keep going through a door. That's all you really got to focus on. I, I think this actually would have been a cool dungeon for the spinner, like more spinner things. We use it to extend the bridges, but when you have this floating dungeon, this floating sky city, and like you could have like spinner rails connecting different areas, like you could, you know, do some almost platforming sort of stuff with the spinner here, and I think that's a missed opportunity. Yeah, they they opted to like the first half is like the single claw shot half and and uh, uku grabbing. Which, like I said earlier, is it's kind of like they stuck a Korok leaf in here without sticking a Korok leaf in here. And so you have to grab onto the chickens to to glide your way around. The, and there, there's a couple of rooms that are like really vertical and, and you know tall, multi-floored, which are cool, but you, there's no exits coming off of them. They're, you know, it's just the room and you've got to like unlock certain things and, mm -hmm. and you know... Uh, like that but yeah to have to be able to traverse it you know a little bit with the spinner would have been nice um i i pulled the ball and chain out to fight bad guys in this just because i wanted to use the ball and chain to to, to do stuff with it <laughs> right which yeah i'm i'm coming kind of coming around on that's my favorite item in this game fighting guys is hilarious with that thing because they they if you miss them and they they get close enough to attack you, you just you just pull the yo-yo back and you hit him again, and like yeah. it's, just, it's just so yeah, satisfying. To it takes like ten hits, but it's so satisfying. It's wonderful. I do enjoy there, that weapon. <laughs> there, there's also a room in here um, where this game is not a 3D platformer, but there's a room that does have just it, you have to keep jumping 
from a ledge to a ledge and it's all these narrow paths and i just felt it that was so annoying yeah because it, i remember some things in like ocarina did that too where they just sort of they wanted you to just keep going but because link couldn't jump you would only ever go on just like you would have to jump a single gap or things would slowly like go down like the elevation would go down with you Mm -hmm. and this one did that too we had those little floor tile guys come back that was the worst they'll just be there on the other side of a jump for some reason i was happy to see them at first but i was just like you know you just randomly stick them back and like you know we haven't seen them since like the first dungeon really yeah and then they're here and like okay now i don't now i really don't want to see you here I, i i thought they were hilarious in the first dungeon but Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now it's like okay, fine, and I don't even really get a chance to kill them because you you hit them with your your boomerang, and they get dropped off a ledge somewhere. And yes. it's like, Okay, you're yeah. gone. Okay, bye. Peace out. S- speaking of that, uh, the room right afterwards, you do have to fight two Dinafos or however you pronounce that, and I just was able to make them both fall off. <laughs> yeah. Oh yes. Yeah, they. Ju- I just that's. I didn't even have to fight them. It was just sort of like I just guided him a little way and I like bumped him with my shield and they just fell off the edge. <laughs> and it opened when you finish that off, it does show a cutscene of a, a thing opening. And I thought it was in a different room. Now, that w- this won't be the first time I thought I figured something out with the level design in this in this dungeon. I was wrong. <laughs> um, so I went and left back to this one area where I thought it opened up. Turns out it didn't. I went back and I was like, oh, I had to look like straight up and there's some vines hanging up there. And that's where they have one of those egg switches as well. Oh, yeah. Then we have to... Go ahead, BZ. I, I thought this fight was... Uh, the Denophilos fight was pretty funny. Just because, you know, for me, one jumped immediately into the pit. And I fought the other <laughs> one. But when we get to the mini boss, I'm like, oh, yeah, they figured out that problem. They uh, Yep. They, figured they evolved. <laughs> yes. Um, after that, we do get... Uh, we get prompted to use the Uku with like air vents, like vertical air vents. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And we've got a couple rooms that have this puzzle where you just have to like hang on to them and just float by and ride the air vents f- shooting you back up. It's super straightforward though. Like it would have, we've dealt with so many other dungeons that have done things like this. Even in like um, Minish Cap had these things where you had to float. And you had to use air currents, and but it was still like trying to figure out like I gotta hit this air current, then this one, then this one, and this is it's always just like a straight shot ahead of where you need to go. And it's kind of it's just, it's just disappointing. Like they could have just done a little bit more with that, made it a little bit harder to see. I I think that would have made it better at least. Well, yeah, especially because it's like one air vent in the middle of the room, and like maybe a one that's vertical to, or or horizontal too that that'll push mm-hmm. you along or or that's there to mess you up but the one big one in the middle of the room is just like well use this to find your way around. it's kind of like uh what was that the earth temple and wind waker it's like use mm-hmm. this except that that had a whole dungeon kind of built around that big room mm-hmm. right. where, whereas this is just one room is like hey unlock a couple things in here and then you'll find a door to... I think it was the door to the mini boss. Uh, was it? I, uh, I don't remember, honestly. Were you, uh, <laughs> uh, right after... No, it's because it's right at... Because you need to be holding on to the... Mm-hmm. To the... To the orb egg thing. And then use your brand new second uh, claw shot to get through to the door. Because that holding on to that claw shot opens the little gate up. Kind of like um, in when we get the long shot in the water temple, and we have to step on a switch and then get through real fast. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, um. now um, when we get to we get to the mini boss, and uh, as VC alluded to, it is a, a new type of enemy, but very, in the similar family that we have dealt with. This is the Eralfos. These sure. are the flying lizards, mm-hmm. and they have a sword. And a shield that happens to have the same design as the anchors for the claw shot. I'll let you figure it out from here. Mm -hmm. Well, and what was annoying for me as, you know, he was like blocking, you know, right. So he blocks, you know, right before he attacks you. And I'm like, oh, I need to hook onto it. And so I was locking onto him and using my claw shot and he wasn't coming to me. I felt like, you know, 
I was being robbed of like, you know, my move and because every time I went to go like hook onto it, it he wasn't like pulling down. I'm like, I know it has to do something. It has to do something. Mm-hmm. And he wasn't pulling down. And finally, for whatever reason, it finally locked on and, you know, slash, 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 bash, 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 helm splitter. And then, you know, you do it a couple of times. He does it. He has a second phase. What is the second phase? Uh, the second phase, he flies out and around and he'll just like move. He'll, he'll oh, change that's right. out where he's like coming around and he'll make a sound. BC said this earlier too. He'll make a sound just before he's about to attack. Where if you can't see him, it's like you gotta dodge. And it's funny. There's so many times where I targeted him and I shot my claw shot, but it just uh, kind of like went in a different direction. Yeah, <laughs> I don't understand uh, that at all. <laughs> oh man, I yeah, I thought I was. Uh, it, it was kind of like Phantom Ganon in that way, where you'd be like, "Where's he coming from? Where's he coming from?" Uh, you know, he'd move around the room, and I could hear his wings too, so I could hear like in my headphones like where he was coming from and mm-hmm. and was able that helped but yeah i was i was hoping it was going to be something like hey put your iron boots on to pull him out of the air but you just had to hit him at the right time um oh, if, you didn't have to have the iron boots no i no no mm-hmm. i would shoot an arrow at him and he would put his shield up and then i would immediately okay off. that's yes. fun yeah that's that was, cool the, i don't know if maybe that made it quicker for me um, but that's that, that yeah. was the pattern I did to get him into the to putting his shield up. That would yeah. have been helpful later when I went through the cave of ordeals after this after this temple. Mm. So, sure. yeah, because there's a there's a couple fights with them towards the end that I was like, I really like it if if one of you would attack me now so I can <laughs> stop running away from this dark nut. So this we're we're at the halfway point of this dungeon, so we'll go ahead and take a quick break. When we get back, we're going to talk about the cool stuff that we're going to do with two claw shots. Woo! All right, let's talk about it. I'm talking about our Patreon. That's patreon.com slash chat of the wild. Go there for as little as a dollar a month. You can join up. We've got some great people on there. We've got a Discord that you get on. You can talk with people about the games you're playing. We talk about Zelda stuff. We share pictures of food. People are mm-hmm. going places. A lot of really nice people on there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's really cool. Brian will do his updates when he's going live on Twitch. Where is that at? Uh, to Twitch. You just go now. You can just go to Luigi'sApartment.com. And that'll oh, just look at that. That'll just link right to my Twitch channel. Um, Fancy. Yeah, Luigi's Apartment.com, a uh, a division of Luigi K LLC. <laughs> wow! All yeah. right, there you go. Uh, we've yeah, also got um, some uh, some of our uh, people in the in the Discord are streaming their own stuff. Uh, Hylian Gamer One has been streaming Wind Waker and Minish Cap lately, and it's it's fun kind of ducking in there and. And he's using uh, Chat of the Wild as like a book club thing, where like he he'll listen to the episodes or or get get some hints, like oh yeah, that's right, you guys talked about this, or I'm I got the mole mitts and I'm about as happy as Jess was when she got the mole mitts. So it, it's kind of it's kind of adorable. The prophecy has been fulfilled. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can go and check that out. We are actually uh, when this goes up, we are less than a week away for E3. So ooh, Brian ooh, and I are going to be doing some streaming stuff on there for as many shows as we can. I think yeah. we'll see the scheduling is so weird on here. Look it up. Uh, follow us on Twitter. I'll, po- I'll post something on there of when we're going to be doing that. Yeah. Check out Luigi's apartment on Twitter too. I, th- I think uh, we've, we've at least committed to doing the Xbox and the Nintendo press conferences. Yeah, um, I was already just like Nintendo, yes, and then you mentioned Xbox. I was like, yeah, sure, I don't have yeah. Xbox right now, but maybe this will be the conference that's just like, all right, I gotta buy an Xbox. Uh, also, uh, I've got an announcement officially. I can go and say that at the uh, end of this week, for June 11th, to go alongside the 20th anniversary of the Game Boy Advance, I'm Ooh. launching a new show called Podcast Advance. Yay! Where each week, myself and a guest. We'll talk about a single Game Boy Advance game. For the first episode, I have uh, Twitter personality Stealth40K joining me to talk about Super Mario Advance. 
It's a lot of fun. Got a lot of really great guests on there. Um, I'm really excited for all the people that we have on there. A lot of greenlit podcast people, but then some other people that, um, you know, from all over the internet. So it's a lot <laughs> of fun. Check it out. There is an introduction episode on there already. So you can find it on all your podcast players. Hit subscribe. When the first episode launches on this Friday, you'll get it right away and you can listen and enjoy Game Boy Advance games as much as I do. Yay. Yeah, I watched you play some of uh, Mario Advanced, and I was like, I should play Mario 2 again. And so I did, and I got destroyed. <laughs> What'd you play it on, though? I played it on the NES version on the Switch channel. Um, okay. And I used Luigi the entire time. And, man, I'm just, maybe I just, I'm not as good as that game as I remember being. Because um, I played that Mario Advanced version a lot and and dominated that game when it was on Game Boy, but... So I had to I had to turn Mario two off and put Mario three on just to feel better about myself because I'm really good at that game still. But to wrap up our Patreon, we have a couple of cool things on there too. When you sign up, uh, you get a shout out where there's a little form you fill out talking about your favorite Zelda games. Then we'll talk about it here on this slot. Uh, we don't have any this week, but every person that's signed up, they do their own thing. We give them a shout out. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I've had some real heartfelt ones on there that we love to hear. Uh, don't be shy when you fill those out. Just, just, you can pour your heart out. There is, I don't think there's a text limit on a lot of those things. So you can just describe why you like it, all that stuff. It's really great. Yeah. Uh, we've got some goals to hit on there too. We did just hit our goal to play other non Zelda games once a month in a thing that we are calling side quest. And for our first official side quest episode, we're going to be playing a turnip boy commits tax evasion. <laughs> and it is a Zelda like though. Um, but the way it works is we got a little thing on our discord where we're all just playing it together. And then at the end of the month, we record an episode just talking about what we thought about it. And that's going to be exclusive to patrons forever. So if you even want to hear that, you do have to join our Patreon again, that's patreon.com slash chat of the wild. Yeah. I'll probably get in that discord group when I, uh, slot it in. Cause I'll play that on the stream most likely, but, um, yeah. So, uh, look for, look for it there to, for my, my scheduling of that, I guess. Anyways, let's go ahead and kick it over to some other great Greenlit Podcast shows. On the Hardcore Gaming 101 podcast, we ask the tough questions. Killing a Rayman, whatever that may be, is that really so bad? Like, no, is he I even alive? Like, do we know? <laughs> he I, I, he, he have any like desires, it. Cal? Does he have any dreams? We're ranking the top games of all time, and it's not a task we take lightly. There are three battle toads, Drash, Zitz, and Pimple. Uh, they're all skin problems, good. Two of them are the same skin problem. This has always bothered me. <laughs> Zitz, Rash, and Eczema. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, <laughs> even that makes more sense. Hardcore Gaming 101, twice a week, every week. Subscribe at greenlitpodcast.com. Hey, Chris, what's the War Rocket Ajax podcast about? Well, Matt, if we were smart, it'd be about murders, but it's actually about comics. War Rocket Ajax, it's not about murders, but it is weekly on the Greenlit Podcast Network. So we are back. We now have two claw shots. What's better than one claw shot? Two claw shots, two. obviously. And with this ability... Uh, we can now hang off of not like everything that you can climb on, mm -hmm. like vines. You still grab on with both hands, which I was kind of annoyed with. Like, yes. come on, dude. still just, just hang on just like you did everything else. Exactly. But we do have those anchor points. Now, uh, we do come across some like exposed, um, I don't know, <sighs> exposed metal grates. Metal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that or like the the part of the building where yeah. you can claw shot onto those, and this is where I think that this temple shines, because you do get some areas. Uh, I will say I don't know, a little more than half of the rest of the way. It's real obvious what you have to do, but there's a couple areas where you do have to go. Like you have to claw shot onto something in the ceiling, then make your way down, like drop down to uh, below the level that you may, may, maybe didn't think about that. And then claw shot your way through uh, like wall to wall to get around this corner here. And it did remind me of like some of the um, more complicated rooms in the water temple 
where you had to swim around and swim under a thing and then go back up yeah, uh, exactly. some other thing or oh, something like yeah. that. Yeah, that's like the, the labyrinthian nature of it that I was kind of hinting at earlier. Is it, mm-hmm. it, I exactly felt like that one room in the water temple that was like that, where instead of claw shotting to things, we were bombing different walls to get through to the next area or whatever. Yeah. We also get these weird rings that when you get on, when you, you claw shot onto them, they slowly start to fall. And so you have a time those. limit. Yeah. Uh, most of them you can just target to the next ones, and it's basically like your mid to jump. Oh, you can? Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh. <laughs> they introduced that super late, which is really weird that, like, but it it instantly starts feeling like Midna, like exactly like the Midna mechanic mm-hmm. when you're a wolf. But it there's... is inconsistent. But yeah, because yeah, there's some of them that are not the like that. Either. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, exactly. I'm panicking. I'm panicking. I don't know where to claw to. I don't know where to claw to. I'm like circling, <laughs> circling, circling, circling. I'm like, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. <laughs> this a, is it. This is it for me. <laughs> there's, a, there's a couple times where I just like I couldn't figure out what to do, and I just held on, and I was like, it. It's been an honor serving with you, gentlemen. And yes. just went down. <laughs> I bid you a good day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like I'll tr- I'll get them next time I guess right Just right back to the door those, those definitely got me a couple of times <laughs> yeah I I do I really like it uh it makes you it makes you have to pay more attention to the room yeah than you've had really in the whole dungeon I would say like some of the the exception is like maybe in the Goron one when you had to climb up the sides of the walls and the ceiling you occasionally would need to like okay, I need to just trace where I need to go kind of thing of just saying, like, I can see the door down here from this angle, but when I'm upside down, I'm not going to know exactly which direction I was going in again. Um, and it's it, it's kind of a similar thing into this where you do kind of, you want to look around, though all you're really looking for are either vines or that little circle anchor design. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or the or the the chain link fencing or grating or whatever you want to mm-hmm. call it. Yeah. Uh, we also do come across the um, the bloody bokoblins, or not the uh, the bloody um, boca boca oh, blin, or bo- yeah. what are they called? They called the piranha uh, yes. plants as well. Yeah, the um, <laughs> deku the, babas. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I started calling the blood them, babas. I was calling them dino babas. Dino babas. <laughs> they will be hanging from the ceiling, which it's like. It, I, I wish they did it more. They should have done it like a surprise. Like you were hanging ah. down if you came down somewhere and there's one just hanging there. But I feel like you saw them far enough ahead that it never really was that scary. You're always just like, yeah. well, I'm just obviously going to shoot them from here before I go anywhere close to that. So I saw most of them. I I saw all of them but one. One got me and it was where there was like this heart piece. Yes. Yes. Did you exactly scream? that one. And it definitely startled me. I was like, I was, and I was like, and it came down from the ceiling, like right above the the treasure chest. And I was like, oh, oh, where did you come from? I'm like, no, die, die. At, at that point, though, I'd been messing because that's right before this like little tiptoe thin. Uh, uh, yeah. Hey, yes. Man. God. And there were just there were keys bothering me on it the yes. whole time. And by the time I'd gotten across and he dropped down, I was just like, "Oh, hey, how you doing?" Like I can deal with you. It's <laughs> the, the keys, like I can't just I'm on a you know because you take you swing your sword once and you fall off the ledge or you, mm-hmm. you grab onto the side of the ledge or something like that. Yeah. So when he popped was... down and uh, he didn't really scare me, um, I, I really yeah I really wish that they had you know they'd been more surprising. Uh, but like you'll he- you'll either see them ahead or the ones on the ground that are hiding. You'll hear the music, and there's not that like kind of great what it, like Half Life uh, that creature in Half Life that hangs the tongue mm-hmm. all the way down, and mm-hmm. you, you can't like mm-hmm. that kind of. Mo- there's nothing good and and scary and startling like there's nothing good like that about them. So Th- mm. that that is a good analogy. That uh, those oh. do remind me a lot of that because oh. especially Brr. even with these ones where they can like. They will bite your whole body around you. Yes. Like that. Yeah, it's yeah. true. If this was Half-Life, Link would have been chopped in half or something like that. <laughs> um, but, yeah, in this one, we only get like, ow, that hurts me. <laughs> oh, let me spin real quick. Yeah. Um, yeah, so 
we also do come across uh, one of those big Diku Baba things. Oh, yes. With the, like the floating head sort of thing. What's well, on yeah. like a vine? Randomly. It just felt so out of place. Yes. I mean. It just sitting there. Because that we, was a mid-boss in the first dungeon. We we used to get, uh, in in old older 2D Zelda games, we used to get uh, previous dungeon bosses as mid-bosses in later like dungeons, sure, yeah. yeah, um, but like, yeah, it just it's that's not something we we they do anymore, and so when you see it, it's kind of weird, and especially like a reused mid boss, it's mm-hmm. yeah, it's a little strange. And he was like a dino version of that one. I know. I was like, okay, here's your bomb. Eat it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so I mentioned before uh, that dragon showed up and destroyed one of the bridges, and with the dual claw shots, we can get across there by going. I I didn't realize these were supposed to be the P hats. Oh yep. really? Um, yes. And uh, it's funny oh. they say that because the P hats terrified me. Yeah. In Arena, and now they are just these benign weed sacks. Yeah, or they're something your friends. Like that. Yeah, yeah to, like drop, you know, clumps of dirt when you when you grab onto them <laughs> right um it's Which, interesting like it's it's i hate how slow it is but i like the the theory of what they're doing here of grabbing onto this thing that will take you over a wall where you can't see anything else and that's how you're getting around and then we even do the the abc's hole in the wall show where you gotta you gotta Lower yourself down to fit right through this this hole in the wall. Yeah, with the chain and everything. Which is like that's fun, but it doesn't help when your camera freaks out when you're like getting too low and you can't adjust where you're looking. Oh, it just dear. like clips into the wall that's, or that something sucks. like that. Yeah, it's really tough to see. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do come across a Poe here. If there's oh, a little yeah. if there's a little tree yeah. hanging out by itself, that there's a Poe that you can fight and kill if there's you also want to. A um, got some got some rope wolf rope traversal. I was I had just previously in, yeah. in the room before gone like wow d- no wolf mechanics in this dungeon at all and they're like ah 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 ah, ah, ah. yeah we put some <laughs> rope in here like yes. oh, great thanks thanks guys yeah when I got yeah. to that point with the stupid rope I ran out of air so. I ran, there is, there's two pose, right? So there's one by the tree and there's one by the rope. And of course I have mm-hmm. to get the pose. I have to get them. So, oh, I didn't see the tree one. I just saw that there was one up on top of the yeah. wall. Now, the tree one is out by, like, off on its own on this, like, little, on this yeah. little island. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Maybe that's the one I'm thinking of. Yeah, there's yeah, you one have to on take a pea hat over to it. And then there is one, like, uh, by the ropes. It's on the opposite mm-hmm. side of where you come into. Mm-hmm. So I see it. And, and at first I, you know, kill all the flying pterodactyl looking things with yeah, my like arrows. Something Karox, I'm sure. Yes. They've, they've got that yeah. name on them. Sure. And I get rid of them. But then as I'm killing the Poe, he swings. Like I go to attack him and I and he attacks me and I jump off the ledge. I get off the ledge somehow, and I die, and then I have to redo that room. Well, I ran out of arrows, so I couldn't kill the pterodactyl things. And so I kept on getting knocked off over and over again, you know, like, because they only respond to arrows. They don't respond to any other weapon that you have. And Even so, the ball and chain? What? Even the ball and chain? Oh, I didn't try the ball if, and chain. Yeah, if they get close what, enough. What about the slingshot? Probably. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. I doubt that they respond to the slingshot. I'm yeah. You has probably anyone could... used the slingshot since like the first dungeon. Jeremy has. I haven't. Uh, I've had to use it. Yeah. I forget about it. He t- he brought it up. Yeah, I'm sure it would take like 15 hits, but you could do it. <laughs> um, yeah. There's this area near near the end of like one little path that we're also going to find the big key here. Um, this is there. There is this pillar in the middle with all these ropes around there. You go around there. I went into the top. Uh, you have so we do have a new other enemy in here that they are like these 
rhino kind of looking things that will charge you. Oh, they're you. like the adult ones. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's and the mama. You can't, you can't take their, their face off, though. No, you cannot. Uh, you just have to try to get behind them. Which is a shame. I just... Cause I, that, that's my favorite thing, is taking the face off and then hitting them with their face. Yes. Yeah. It just brings me no end of joy to, like, make that connection. <laughs> I uh, I went into this room, and you have a giant wind turbine in the middle of it, too, which you can only get through with iron boots on, I think, right? Or uh, you can stop it. Oh, I guess, yeah. I guess if you, what, hit the... Grab the air egg switch in there. Oh, you mean turn oh, yeah, off, you or? had to use iron boots to walk by it. But yes. yeah, once you hit the switch, it stops it completely. So I went into there, walked straight past these guys. They just charged right past me. Like I just <laughs> didn't barely even tried. They just went past me, got the big key, walked out, and then I was like, okay, good. I'm just gonna go ahead and save and quit and then go to the start of the dungeon where I can just go ahead straight forward. Did that didn't realize there was something else I needed to do downstairs. Yes. <laughs> so I had to go all the way back. To oh, the that again. sucks. So, and this, I said I was going to bring this back up. No, you don't. Uh, so I thought that's what I had to do. And saving and quitting would have been a, a phenomenal idea because what I decided to do was to backtrack all the way back through because I didn't realize going back downstairs was how you just lower yourself into the previous room. But yeah. I didn't turn that switch off. Yeah, you have to turn okay. the switch off. I okay. just got the big key and okay. thought I had the big key and I have my dual claw shots so I can move forward into that other area now. Nope, okay. there was a third piece to that before you could move yeah. into like the northern section of this dungeon. So yeah, so I went I went all the way back down. And I think I actually backtracked like because we does this we go even further, right? There's even more P hat stuff. Uh, yeah, there's like more. aerial P hat stuff, right? No, no, um, okay, the, no, no, no. There's no, not as this is right there. above the main main entrance room. Okay, yeah, no, I I backtracked all the way back to the uh, to the start of the the right side or the left side for Jess and BC. Except you can't. They at at one point they gate you, and I know I was breaking my own rule of don't backtrack yeah, in these say, temples, yeah. but I did it because I was like I can't find the way to get back down into the room, so I'm just gonna take what I assumed was the easy way and just go all the way back. And at some point, like right before they stop you, so I had to go all the way back through. And oh, that's right, I forgot there was a bottom floor to this. And then I drop down, and then luckily there's a way to there's a one of the four there's four ivy uh, pillars covered pillars. Mm -hmm. One of them you can climb to the top of yeah. and and make your way back. That's but, what yeah, I did. I uh, broke my own rule. Womp what did we learn? <laughs> that these dungeons are crap. <laughs> They're fun. They're fun. The puzzles are fun. Uh, I'm, I'm, I won't yes. take that away from them, but yeah. So we pull I, it, the giant egg down. <laughs> <I'm moving> yes. <laughs> yeah, we pull the giant egg down. There's an egg in the main the room. Fan. Yes. Yes. And Which we can, we can move only... through that door. <laughs> I, I swear to you, I was able to, my claw shot went like through it and it didn't grab it because they wanted you to turn that switch off before they would do that. Yeah. Like, I, I swear to you, I was able to grab that, and I should have been able to, like, break the, the logic of this dungeon yes. through that way, but it wouldn't let me. Anyway, did that the way they wanted. Um, we can go forward to the north area of this dungeon, and we have a bunch of these... I mean, they're, they're, they're vertical fans... Yeah, like like turbine yeah. looking thing. This isn't the first time we see them in this dungeon either. There's a there's a a big room where where we have them before, I think. No, or no, wait, no, no. That's, that's one later, of the later. rooms where you you ascend. Yeah. Uh, so, but we get into there and we have to go across. We don't have a bridge to go across, and we have to Spider Man our way from one to the other. And this always stuck in my memory as just something like so cool. I think it's fine still. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely so much more grounded viewing it now after everything. You know, I'm, I'd, 
I always played these, you know, these Zelda games as soon as they come out, and I'm just so mm -hmm. high on them every single time. And this one just always stuck with me. And now I'm going through it again. That we're just being, we're, you know, we're, we're we're looking at things in a in a more professional way, if you will. Um, and it doesn't. I don't know. It's cool. It's 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 interesting. But it's not like holy crap, like I like I remember it being. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I I I feel that. Yeah. I mean, BC, th you knew about this, but now you're doing it yourself. What what do you what do you feel? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> anything. I mean, it, it, it definitely was cool. Um, it. I, I think it's like a great idea. I think I think it's a great idea in that <laughs> you know. You get the claw shot super early, and it's just one of the de facto items, and they managed to put a twist on it. Um, I just wish you had done more difficult things with it instead of just like it's all kind of like vertical. The the spinning fans are all kind of vertical weight around. Uh, I did like the times where, like we talked about earlier, where you you have to, um, you know grab onto something that's falling and then time it to get to, to the next area. That was cool. Um, and I love the, the way it allowed them to like change how you tra traverse through the dungeon. And I think my favorite part about it, even though it's kind of minor is if you think about it from the lore perspective of this is some place where the Uku live and there's, you know, messengers from Hyrule who are coming up to converse with the Uku. This is clearly built so that the Uku can get around, but like they <laughs> have to have a claw shot so that their visitors can actually get around the city. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. So it's about accessibility. Like, of course right. there's a claw shot here. Yeah. Yeah, we uh we do get a a big vertical area of those things to climb on that you do have to go up and it does yeah, it, it it eventually just turned into you waiting as this little fan thing turns. Yeah, yeah. You just wait till you see the thing because you you already know these these fans are big enough where it's like you know you're just waiting to grab onto that thing again. That you're just waiting for it to turn and then your little reticle turns into the little arrows and you're like, okay, good, that that can take me up there. There were several um, times though I missed the timing, like. It had to be just right for me or whatever. And so I like went around and around like several times. I'm like, okay, I'm now irritated by this. But sure. <laughs> yeah. No, I get that. Um, when we get out to the top, uh, this, I like, I really like this battle, but I didn't necessarily enjoy the battle. I didn't enjoy like doing it, but like in terms of like the theatrics of it all, I thought it was really cool all the way from the beginning. So we go into that. We go through the door after we use the big key and we have this, this pathway that looks like a winding pathway, except it's just destroyed. You can't, you can't walk up the pathway like you would normally do. And you have to use your claw shots to kind of sneak your way around by like grabbing onto some broken stuff over here and some vines and getting up that way. And this is where we are going to confront Argarok, the Twilight Dragon. Another and again, Garok. Yes. And again, you get into there and it's like this big thing shows up and it's like, you know, howling at you and there's lightning all around and you have these weird things sticking up out of the ground that you don't know why those are there. But hey, look, those are the things I can grab onto. It's got a sweet sound system, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. Yeah. So Jess, walk me through like how how... Did you know what you needed to do here? Did you? Yeah, it seemed really straightforward help? to me. Like, I thought this battle was super easy. It did not take me very long. I thought, you know, that the dragon himself actually looked pretty cool. So, like, the first round, he's got, like, this, you know, armor around him that you have to break off. So, you latch on... Um, you get up onto like the like these tall speaker like great like things or whatever and he's got a hook like a claw that you you know claw shot onto whatever with your iron boots and you yank him down and he busts all of his armor off um and you do that three times 
And he actually looks really cool when all the he comes crashing down and he actually it's twice, I think. It's not three times, it's just yeah, twice. It is. And all the armor comes crashing off and it's it's actually pretty cool. But it did not like as soon as you see him flying around, you see that that hook that you know you have to claw mm-hmm. onto, you know. It's a different color, you know, it stands out. It really stands right. out. You know, it, it, that's design and that that's mm-hmm. you know, it's good design. Yeah, so they shatter that stuff, and then we start our phase two, and it just, you know, the everything starts to get darker around us. There's, like, more lightning going the on. The rain kicks in, it yeah. Starts yeah, it's raining. very stormy. Mm-hmm. For it's some it, reason. That was cool. Yeah, but then for some reason, the pea hats just start shooting out of the ground. They're, like, well, they, they're yeah. rising they, from the dead. They're, like. Well, yeah, they, they were withered, and then the rain you know, watered them, brought them right. sort of back to life, yeah. and, and they, they fly up into the air. Are Piat's plants? Or what What are yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. There were, in, in Ocarina, Piat's were the the bladed spinning things that, like, would be out in the open field, and there was, like, that giant bulb flower that would, like, spring up and chase after you. Yeah. Yeah, those those are pea hats, and then it has like little ones that it sh- you know will will come at you too. And these ones are just like it's, I said, they they, were they just kind don't of do anything. Fish like in well, every everything was a aquatic creature almost in Wind Waker. The the ones that mm-hmm. chased you in that, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe they were more akin to kelp or something. Oh right, yeah, the Wind Waker ones are terrifying. Yeah, they, they, they have shoot giant stuff at faces. You? Oh yeah, no, they, they look like they're just giant faces. It's like a giant sea creature, but it's just a face. Sound like a helicopter coming after you? Yeah, uh, with giant sharp teeth. Oh, they, they, oh, just, I remember them yes. now. I'm like, yeah. what? Terrifying. Why? <laughs> yeah, these are just like something you find in the home and garden section. Yeah, <laughs> with all their roots coming out. Like yeah. it's like a ball, like the root ball of a plant. I mean, I mean, even the ones in the original Zelda were terrifying in a way of there are eight of them, and I can only kill them when they've stopped, and they don't all stop at the same time. Uh-huh. And mm-hmm. those sometimes I'm just like, well, I'm just not gonna mess with anything in this screen. All right, no, yeah. move along, move along. <laughs> so, BC, how how uh, did the second half work out for you? So the second half, like, I actually died the first time I went through the second half. Mm. Um, because I feel like this is one of the first bosses where you can, like, easily die just because the fall damage from getting knocked down. Okay. Um, so, like, if he hits you at the top. Um, so for, for the viewer who might not know, or the listener, <laughs> listen, unless you're just staring at the podcast app, then you're the viewer. <laughs> <laughs> for the listeners who might not know, um, second phase, you have to climb up the towers uh, and then get to the pea hats and then zip around until you can get to the dragon's back uh, and then, you know, pull, grab them, stab them. Yeah, yeah you don't really climb. You you have to, like, you have to Spider-Man shot. your way, zigzag your way up them yeah, sweet you tweeters. Get- Mm, so and, you can climb uh, up to the platform, and because he'll hook he'll eventually start chaos. coming after you, yeah, yeah, on your way up, which is annoying. Sorry, but, go ahead. No, no, you're fine. Uh, but when you get to the top and you're you're going around on the pea hats, uh, trying to circle around the dragon, if he hits you or if you fall or if you're like me and you forget that you have your iron boots on and the pea hat just starts sinking out of the <laughs> oh no out of the oh, sky. Yeah. <laughs> Um, causing you to get hit. Uh, then you drop to the ground super fast, and it does a lot of damage. And that was the reason I died. So first time, died pretty pretty embarrassingly. And then the <laughs> second time, it was easy peasy, since I knew what to do. Mm-hmm. So. Good. Yeah, so we um, what we have to do is there is a circle of pea hats around here, way up in the sky. Again, busy mentioned you got an issue with heights this one triggers that for sure because you got to get all the way up there and then you're hanging just on this like like i said just this bag of dead weeds that you just claw from like a bulb 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, you can just do like targeting the whole time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, um, and what happens is the dragon will stand in the middle and he'll shoot fire around and you have to be running away from his fire. And then you kind of want to get him to target you first. It, yeah, if you keep doing it, I think it takes longer. Yeah, he'll, sit he'll there, keep he'll... like trying to zero in on you. So if you if you sit there long enough, he'll start inhaling, and you will be like, "That's when you start moving." A thing I found really annoying is that he will immediately match your elevation when you're in that. Though I tried raising and lowering myself on a P hat to oh. dodge its fire, he just immediately follows you. Uh-huh. Like there's yeah. no actual dodging with it. It's kind of annoying. Like reward my creativity there. Come on. Yes, excellent. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, if you do that enough, he'll get worn out. And this is where, this is another really cool moment, is that you claw shot onto his back and then smash the, like, crystal thing on his back and then you, like, fall crashing down to the ground. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that's really cool. Like, all the way up there. Yeah, it is, it is, it, it's intense. And yeah. it, I, I just think it's really neat, especially considering, like, you know where we were at games at the time like that was very cinematic for the kind of stuff oh, that we yeah. had mm-hmm. um but then you do that like twice and then the third time he starts he will to catch change on his to pattern you. yeah which was annoying i had trouble with this actually. i didn't i didn't realize that was what was ha- he got me a couple times before i was like yeah. oh he he learned my pattern right you know, i can't just go scripted. like around and around and around and around one yeah. direction i'm like oh 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 and then like you i'm like to- Mm-hmm. He got me yeah, once. Yeah, you have to, like, go one way and then turn around and go back the other way. And when you're um, Z-targeting on it, it wants to go to that next one. Yeah. And so you have to, like, quick, quick, target the other one, you mm-hmm. know, yeah. and go around. And you have to, like, turn the camera or aim at a different one to, to start the the change in direction. And then it will continue to target the one ahead of you. Yeah. But, yeah, right. it, it's, it's not, like... In, it's not intuitive with the game mechanics to switch directions. It, you have to. Uh, there's another section earlier where where you can you can go back for uh, I think it's a piece of heart or something like that. But in order to change direction, you have to like turn your camera and look that way to, or else it will keep you going in a straight line. And it's the same thing mm-hmm. with this. You you have to put some effort into changing your direction. You can't just quickly do it. Right. So we go and finish him off. He blows up. We get the last piece of the mirror. And Midna just basically says, let's go back to the Arbiter's Grounds. Let's do this. We're not going to do that in this episode. Uh, We're going to be wrapping up here in a little bit. Is there anything else that you all did after we got out of this dungeon? I I found... uh, 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 Miss Dino reminded me uh, of something I found earlier a couple weeks back, but I didn't have the ball and chain yet. And she's like, oh, go check out this cave. You need the ball and chain to get in there. And oh. it's an ice cavern. And mm-hmm. it's got uh, the push block puzzles in it. It's got three in a row. Um, huh. And they're great. I love them. Uh, for whatever reason, um, I like the ones, the few that I've seen in here, I like. Did you get anything I, cool at the end? A uh, piece of heart. I knew what it was going to be. It was it was going to be a piece of heart. I knew that they weren't going to hide a, a purple rupee on me and and just destroy me. I I figured it had to be a piece of heart. So, so it's something uh, I just want to throw out. You could have done this at any point, but it was something that uh, popped up to me. I saw a random screenshot on Twitter of a little maze game. And it was from a Zelda Twitter or something like that. And I saw mm-hmm. it and I was like, I don't know what that is, but it's clearly in Twilight Princess. The marble game? Yes. The marble it's, game. It's uh, I it's never in, knew that this existed. It's it's in the... Oh, I, I didn't... Uh, did I not bring it up? I guess maybe I didn't bring it up. It's it's in the fishing mm-hmm. hut. Yeah, and you can only... You, can, you have to go into first person view and yes. look at it in order to activate it. Everything what? in that shop uh, has a first person view thing. So like there's pictures on the wall of like the, the fishing, uh, clerk from Ocarina of time. There's a picture of him and like, Oh, I think that's my ancestor. I don't know for sure, but I think it is. And it'll zoom in. And that's how we, we found that, uh, she was related to, um, what's his name? Like 
Coco or <laughs> whatever his name was, the, the guy with the bird's nest on his head who sells us the oil. Oh. Like that's her brother, and mm-hmm. her sister is um, the girl who does the... Rafting thing. The rafting canoe game. She runs that. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, like their pictures are on the wall. But if you go over to the corner, yeah, it's that little marble game that, like, you know, your math or science teacher had in the corner, and you know, you you you, you fiddle with the two knobs to 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 move the marble around the around the holes and, and try and get it to the goal. But it uses motion controls too. Yes, it's a motion control mini game. Yes, and I was like, I I saw that screenshot and I was like, I have to find this. I never knew that this was a thing in here. Huh. I played it once and I failed, and I did, and I that was enough for me. So it's fine. <laughs> I, I, but I wanted to mention it. I I beat it uh, my first playthrough. I went through. There's like I think ten, uh, ten different little maze sets. It's not worth it. You don't get anything cool for it. Uh, Just much rupees. like a lot of things in this game, you, you really don't. <laughs> doesn't really great in here. Uh, like speaking of, I I went to the cave of ordeals because I was like, you know what, this I didn't I didn't spend that long or on this dungeon. I guess. Uh, might as well, and I went through that, and it was fine. It was, you know, it's fun. I remember the uh, the the weird spear, ice spear guys being annoying, and yeah, they were very annoying. But I, you, you, each floor you end up on the top, and you're overlooking, and you can kind of get an idea for what's down there, and go, okay, uh, you can develop a plan. And, you know, some, especially when you start to get further into it, some floors, they're like tricking you like, like, oh, there's just some like regular bokoblins or whatever they're called in this game, bulbins down there. So there's got to be something else hidden or there's going to be invisible rats or there's going to be, you know, something underneath the overlook that I'm standing on hiding. You know, there's gonna be like a redead hiding under there or something like that. But, you know, you can stand up and. You only get like a hundred arrows the whole time, you know, if you've got the hundred arrow thing, which we can go get now that we have two hook shots. Yeah. Uh, or claw shots. Ooh. Yeah, that's but, what I'm definitely um, gonna go do. There's a new there's a new uh star game that you can you yeah. can play. Um with uh with weird tingle. But yeah. um Yeah, so I kind of made my plan and I got all the way to the end and I ended up uh wasting I had a blue chew uh a a rare chew and the great fairies tears that Giovanni gave us and I ended up using like all of them in the last five rooms or something and all you get is more rare I knew I was gonna get more great fairies tears but you can't just warp back there anytime you want to get more great fairies tears, you would have to go all the way back through the floors. <laughs> no. And the, the yeah, and the final room is three dark nuts. And so I I wasted I think I think two of my potions on the three dark nuts. Uh the other room that I needed the potions for was one dark nut and two of those flying guys that they were the mid boss in this one. And so I wish I'd known I could shoot an arrow at them to to engage their shield and get them down and get them wiped out quicker so I could just focus on the the dark nut. Mm, but sure. the dark nut like man, in Wind Waker, taking on three dark nuts is fun. Um Yeah. It it's manageable. It's you, you can deal with it. In in this one even with the cool moves that I was like you know going to this game I was all like excited about having you know some new moves and like, you know, the, the combat in this game, I remember thinking it was so great and eh, it's okay. All you can really do is do the, the roll around behind them spin attack. And sometimes that doesn't even work. And so I was throwing bombs at these guys for the most part, like Mm -hmm. trying to get them to walk over the bombs, cooking the bomb a little bit and, and trying to get it just right so that it would fire behind them and hit them from the back. And I wasted like, all of my potions that I had saved up, like my sweet, sweet potions. So, yeah, it's not worth it. Cave Ordeals, I knew it wasn't going to be worth it, but I didn't realize just how, like, screwed over I was going to get. Oh, man. 
That is unfortunate, but a good warning, I guess. Yeah, so like, you know what? Don't, if Don't bother it. If you've got the Great Fairy's Tears already and you've got some, like, uh, blue chew jelly, good to have. Uh, you can go couple... easily find the purple ones, the magic ones. No, no, the purple one, the blue ones, and then the sparkly one. There's actually a sparkly one. The sparkly, sparkly one. ones are the rare ones. Yeah, yeah and then blue gold, ones are just, sorry, yes. blue ones refill all your health. No bonus attack. Mm -hmm. uh, purple right. ones are the, are the maybe you'll get full hearts, maybe you'll get one heart. Uh, I think it's what BC had said earlier this season. Mm -hmm. But yeah, or maybe you'll you... lose a heart. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, maybe you'll lose a heart. So, and you're dead. Um, there, there's a couple spots in here where you'll see a blue chew and you'll see a sparkling chew. Uh, so I ended up going 20 floors back in until I found the sparkling chew so I could get a second potion because I was like, you know, I'm I'm not just going to walk out of here with a, you know, minus two sweet potions. I'm going to at least get one of them back. <laughs> and then that was it. So, yeah, Cave of Ordeals. It's fun, but like I don't get as excited as I get about the the Cave of Neverending Happiness, as I call it from Wind Waker. Like that one I like I like playing that one. That's fun. Like that's that's just that's where Wind Waker like lives. Like that's where I feel alive in that game. So yeah, no, no man. Anyone else uh, do anything else after the dungeon? No, no, nope. Well, for the next episode, uh, without spoiling anything, it will be our penultimate episode. Uh, we have one more dungeon, and then sort of the final thing after that. Don't get too excited. It's not like dungeons like we've had before it's more of a story thing not gonna say anything else just finish that and then we'll be back here and we'll talk about it on Shadow of the Wild